This is a University of Otago podcast. Hello and welcome to Vote Chat 2011. Vote Chat is a series of conversations with visiting campaigning politicians and it's being filmed here at the Otago University uh, Media Production Studios so that it can be uh, live streamed on the internet, uh, later available on YouTube, iTunes and also broadcast on Dunedin Channel 9 TV. Um, so it's, we're trying to do things a bit differently here. Um, trying to make it interactive. It's a conversation today with a politician, but we've also got an audience here who will also hopefully make a bit of noise. They will uh, uh, cheer or heckle or ask questions. Um, we'll try and make it kind of lively. And today we've got, uh, uh, in my view, a very interesting guest, uh, the Minister for Revenue, uh, leader of United Future, and MP for um, Ohio. Ohio. So welcome, Peter Dunn. Thank you. So today I'm particularly interested in exploring your, not just political beliefs, we talk about that normally, but um, the kind of the tension between pragmatism and principle and you know um, this idea that perhaps you are a bit of a political chameleon, you shift between different ideologies and uh, ideologically open-minded perhaps, to you know, put it um, quite nicely, or whether, yeah, what, what is the nature of your politics? So that's the first question, I guess, where Okay, well, let, yeah. maybe I should start by yeah. just describing a bit of my background. Which that would be great. Right. Yep. Uh, as you probably know, I was a Labour MP for 10 years. And a member since, what, 72 or something? That's correct, yes. So I, I was a member of the Labour Party for well over 20 years. Uh, why? It's a very hard question for me to answer. I drifted into it. Mm. Um, essentially in the 1960s, very much inspired by Norman Kirk, right. who I got to know a little bit and his vision of what New Zealand could be. Okay, uh, interestingly enough, Annette King, she was here a yeah. few weeks ago and she said the same thing. Yeah. Well, she I, was inspired yeah. by Norman Kirk. To well, it was, to me, it, was, it wasn't Kirk's vision for what you do to the economy or what you do mm. to health or education or those sorts of things. It was really a vision of what New Zealand could be mm. and New Zealand's place in the world. I didn't come from a very political family mm. at all, uh, certainly not um, in my parents or grandparents' generation, although I've subsequently discovered political throwbacks okay. beyond that. And I, I suppose the best way of describing how I describe myself is I'm an old-fashioned liberal. Mm. I'm not a libertarian, mm. and, and I think the word liberal gets misused today. I'm, very much, yeah. I'm very much in the old British liberal tradition, okay. a sense of uh, basically laissez-faire, letting people get on with their lives, but at the same time recognising, uh, to quote someone who's no relation to me, John Dunn, okay. uh, no man is an island, sure. so governments do have responsibilities. So it's that mix between maximum amount of freedom for people to do their own thing, but also the government having a, an overarching responsibility which, which separates me from the Conservatives yes. and from the, the, the Social Democrats. But has it always been this way for you? Or oh yes it has and I found so that... So right in your early yep, days of the Labour Party yes, you saw yourself... And, and, and to that extent, when I came in in 84 and the Douglas Revolution yep. was underway, a large, lot of, a large part of that was consistent with my sort right. of worldview. So I was pretty happy in that period. But I must say, as that unfolded, and we went through the sort of the post, um, the, the, the 87 crash, mm -hmm. and I suddenly saw at that point that for a lot of them, um, actually the response was secondary to the pursuit of the ideology. Okay. I started to have my doubts, and then the party started to tear itself apart. Um, and then a little earlier, actually, about 83, I think, from memory, there'd been the big split in the British Labour Party mm. where uh, David Owen and um, mm. Shirley Williams and co had, wa had walked out. And I identified okay. very much with their right. stream of thinking. Yeah. And my frustration was that there was not a, a liberal voice in that sense in the New Zealand political environment, which was what I attempted to provide when we... Um, finally parted company in the mid-90s. Okay, but I, I've always got the sense that you'd be close, in the 80s particularly, you would have been closer to Douglas than, say, Longy. Uh, that would be correct, but, but I was not... Uh, I wasn't sort of locked in, yeah, in step sure. with Douglas. I, I liked the idea that we were making change, because I could see change was necessary. I liked the idea that we were talking about giving people more choice about how they ran their own lives, because yeah. I could see that was necessary. But I started to have my doubts post-87 when what became obvious was that the sort of ideological mantra was overtaking the pragmatism of what needed to be done and that it was sort of full speed ahead with the agenda and damn the torpedoes. Okay, sure. 
Now, when ACT was formed, th mm. there was, I don't know if it was just a rumour, it was certainly published in the media, that you considered joining ACT um, or merging with your party with ACT or something? I mean, Th that was very early in 1995, uh, 96 right, okay. actually. Um, and we looked, because there was some common ground. Yeah. But it fell apart for two reasons. One was, um, and it's, it's a tradition that's still there in ACT today, mm. my way or the highway. There was no compromise possible. Sure. Uh, we, 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 and that was the United MPs at that stage, either bought the ACT agenda full and final or there was no deal. Right. And the second point was just to sort of reinforce that. They actually went out there and announced they were shortly going to have seven MPs in Parliament. So at that point we just said no way. But, but actually what it also proved was how extreme and uh, single-minded and determined and intolerant that viewpoint is. I think a position that subsequent events have um, borne out pretty well. Okay, so that was always a disaster waiting to happen in your view? Absolutely, and it's, 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 it's sort of reared its head from time to time. I think the disaster is well and truly occurring at the moment. Would, would you write off uh, ACT now? As, I don't uh, write them off. I mean, I think they, they, they could well make uh, you know, uh, the next parliament, but I don't think the Prime Minister would be particularly uh, enamoured of having to rely on them. Right. So. Where would you put yourself on the political spectrum? The left-right spectrum, for example, where at the oh, moment would you be? I'm, this may sound like a cliché, but I'm pretty close to the middle. Okay. And the, re the reason is quite simple. On some things, you, you might class my view as being to the right. Mm. On other things, my view would be to the left. I actually think the divide is a little bit artificial. Sure. But I, mean, I, but I, think, thing, but I think I think in terms, in terms of you drawing a line, I think I'm pretty much uh, around the middle. Um, so From my vantage point, my views have my views and my sort of guiding principles and philosophies haven't changed since I was about 14. Now you might say that's a pretty inflexible stance on my part, but I actually think it's a mark of some consistency. Okay, so the ways in which